All right, so in the tectosilicates, we also have the whole family of feldspar minerals to discuss. And to do this, it's best to actually look at our little compositional ternary diagram here. How cute, I printed this out. So um, what, the, what we really usually focus on, because these are all solid solutions compositionally, um, and then in this area, see we have our miscibility gap, and we'll be going over this in lecture two. So um, this is kind of just a brief overview about the compositions. But, so what we do usually when we're talking about these, especially in a mineral exam setting, is we look at the components that are at the edges of this triangle, right? So we're gonna focus specifically on orthoclase and microcline, which is our potassium end member, then we've got our sodium end member over here, albite, and then we'll also focus on anorthite and then in between labradorite as well. So when we're doing these in an exam or a quiz setting, if you have anything over here, you're able to be able to call it an alkali feldspar. And then if we have anything down here, labradorite, anorthite, you can refer to it as a plagioclase feldspar. If you want to be more specific because you know, ooh, I'm almost certain that this is labradorite as well, on the exams or quizzes, you'll be able to say plagioclase feldspar. And then maybe in another question, there will be opportunity for extra points to say, ooh, but I want to say that it's actually labradorite to be more specific. So when we're talking about these, we'll mainly be looking at these kind of end members and then talk a little bit about these guys that fall in between. So to start us off, let's look at orthoclase and microcline. So remember, these are our potassium end members here. And I put this about because we'll talk a little bit about um, how some of these are not necessarily all our potassium end members and might also include a little bit of sodium in there as well. So on the very far end of things, we have our orthoclase here. So these two crystals um, are really nice because you'll first thing you'll notice is that you're, they are euhedral. So actually, they look really similar to one of those wooden blocks that we got in class, right? This is the eraser block, right? How I have it here, and I've got that 180 degree rotation. How fun. <laughs> So with orthoclase, it is pretty common to see these really nice euhedral crystals. Now, they're not necessarily always this large. You can see that this one's probably about an inch or so long. Having something this large is not always that common, but euhedral crystals out of all of the feldspar family does most commonly occur in something like orthoclase. What I also want you to notice here is the surface features. So if I look at this, I can kind of see this kind of like ruddy, muddled surface here. We've got some discoloration from weathering, alteration, things like that. Notice that the surface is very rough. It's difficult to tell that this has a vitreous luster um, just because of how this crystal formed. And for the orthoclase samples that we have in our collection, this is really, really typical to see here. This kind of weathered surface, difficult to see any actual shine off of it. So on an exam or a quiz, you could say that this has more of an earthy luster, maybe subvitreous, because we don't see any of that glassy reflection, right? Really common for orthoclase. Um, what's also common for orthoclase is this coloring, right? It kind of looks a little bit pinks are really typical of orthoclase and as you can see in my hand behind we have a variety of colors so um, <laughs> this is pretty typical so euhedral crystals the surface texture um, and we'll get into the actual physical properties as well pretty soon so to distinguish this guy orthoclase from microcline because actually their streaks are both going to be white they both um have similar hardnesses. Let's see what I have in my notes here. Yep, they're both about a six on the hardness scale, so we should be able to scratch some glass. Let's give it a go right now. What I'm mainly trying to get at here is that we need to be able to distinguish these two from each other, and especially if they have things like hardness and streak, um, very similar, we have to use some other tools to do that. So let's give this a good scratch here. All right. Got a nice scratch on my glass right there. Looks good. I would expect to see the same thing with microcline as well. So this one, orthoclase. We've got that euhedral crystal. 
and that surface feature as well that's kind of rough not very vitreous so next when we look at microcline microcline is where we start to see evidence that we are in a solid solution series so the way that we do that and here i'm just kind of organizing by color so if i look at this sample right here the first thing i notice is that i don't have that euhedral crystal shape anymore I've kind of lost it. But what I do see now that I have much more vitreous luster, right? We can see the actual crystal faces and crystal planes, cleavage planes. Um, I can see that this actually has 90 degree cleavage in two directions. So when I face it like this, one cleavage plane here, one cleavage plane here. And this is typical of feldspars. So if you're stuck between something like calcite or in the carbonate family, that 90 degree cleavage is going to be a dead giveaway that instead of being in the carbonates, you might be looking at a feldspar. So the first thing that comes to mind is rhodochrosite, very similar in color to this sample, right? But because I have that different cleavage, that's one of those dead giveaways. Another way that I can distinguish this sample from something like orthoclase down here is if I hold it up really close, I can almost see these stripes. They look like kind of orange and white banding. Now that banding is X solution. And X solution tells us that we have multiple compositions in this sample. And microcline exhibits this X solution much more commonly than something like orthoclase does. And so what this tells me is I'm maybe not 100% potassium here. Maybe I've moved, let me grab our little diagram. Maybe I'm somewhere down here and I've got a little bit of um, sodium coming into the party or something like that. And so having that X solution lines, X solution lamellae, that's a dead giveaway that we're looking at microcline instead of orthoclase. Also because we don't see those euhedral crystals, we have that really nice, beautiful, vitreous luster, and we have a variety of colors. So if we look this one, we have that kind of um, brownish tinge to it. And then this one, very pink, right? We would refer to this as salmon pink. This is probably the first thing people think of when they think of like potassium feldspars. Down here, we have a specific variety of microcline called amazonite, um, spelt like amazonite. And we can look really closely at this and still see that same kind of exolution texture. Do you see those lamellae here? We've got like these kind of wavy lines, look like waves or ripples almost. And they're not perfect lines, right? That's another thing that tells us that this might be microcline instead of something else in the feldspar family. Because these lines are not perfectly straight, um, this is what leads me to believe that it's microcline. And we can still see that 90 degree cleavage. Let me get a good. Yep, so here's one of our cleavage planes. Here's our second cleavage plane, 90 degree angle right here. This one's very vitreous. The reflection off of this is, is great. Another thing, if you line up a cleavage plane of feldspar, you'll very easily see this kind of like step pattern on the top, really similar to something that we saw in like Galena or something like that. And the last thing that you can't tell with your eyes necessarily, but that is important to note between microcline and orthoclase. Orthoclase is monoclinic. Microcline is triclinic. So we can tell this in a microscope, like an optical microscope, petrographic microscope. We can figure this out much more easily than we can with our eyes right here because we don't have a good crystal form of these guys especially right now. So just as a reminder, monoclinic for orthoclase, triclinic for microcline. Um, and I think we have really covered it all. The density for these, as I said, because we're in the tectosilicate family, the density for all of these is going to be moderate, moderately low density. It's not something that will help you determine um, physical properties or anything like that. And I think that we are good on this one. The next video, we'll talk about the other end of our um, feldspar diagram.